You ever thought about how epic it would be to beat new Super Mario Bros. with your feet? No? Well, no worries, because that's what we're kicking off with today. There's only one rule. I can only use my feet and nothing beyond that. I won't be playing this on my 3DS simply because I don't want to risk accidentally breaking it, so I'll be using a controller instead. And before we start, I do apologize my foot cam isn't crispy HD footage. All I have that can record for several hours is this webcam, so I hope that's okay. In order for this to work at all, I had to tape my webcam down to my desk as well as tape my controller to this box. So with that, we're ready to get this party started. Immediately starting with 1-1, I learned that running is very difficult since my big toe can only hit one button at a time. It's also really easy to push down because I have to curl my toe in order to move around at all. So get used to seeing Mario randomly crouch all the time. I can't really do much about that. When I got to 1-2 though, I started to get a bit braver and went for some star coins. At this point, my feet are starting to ache a little bit, which really worried me considering I have to play the rest of the game like this. 1-3 has these bouncy springs that made this level a lot easier since I didn't have to make as many jump inputs. I also encountered my first red ring and was lucky to grab five of them. One mid castle was a lot harder than I expected. Walking and jumping over the crushing pillars took some time to get used to as I had a couple of dumb deaths. Bowser Jr. was surprisingly not that bad since I managed to have a fire flower and mostly spammed him with fireballs to win. 1-4 taught me how much slopes can suck. The Goomba section at the end was tricky to time since I couldn't really run, but I managed to get through it. 1-5 wasn't too bad until the weight shifting platforms. Normally these are easy to navigate, but I had to time my jumps really well or I'd get to a point where I couldn't move forward very easily. With some practice though, I was able to get through this. One castle was a really easy level with some patience, and I just damage boosted over Bowser too. And there we go, we're already done with World 1. That was a lot faster than I was expecting, I'm not gonna lie. But on to World 2. Two ones wigglers were giving me some issues when trying to jump over them without running. They weren't impossible, but you really needed to time your jumps well. Getting Fire Mario helped a lot with this level. Also, around this point, I had to take my first break from playing because my feet were really starting to cramp up. So 2-2 two -two had me facing Lekitu. Since I couldn't run, it was a lot harder to get a hold of his cloud, but using Fire Mario helped quite a bit. 2-3 wasn't really hard, but more just annoying since a lot of these jumps had to be pretty specific. Especially this part with a giant piranha plant. I had to basically mash my toe against both of the buttons to run and jump over him or else I would get hit and have to start over. Aside from that, it was an easy enough level. 2-4 has nothing much to write home about, but I had this insane luck with the Hammer Bros and managed to kill them both in like one second. I'm not sure how I pulled that off, but I'll take it. 2 Midcastle, on the other hand, was a chore to play. Mainly because these platforms are constantly rotating, making it difficult to time your jump. With some tries though, I did claw through this. 2-5 for whatever reason was giving me quite the hiccup from all the block hoppers. I guess it was because they would jump so quickly that I wasn't given much time to react to where they would land, I don't really know. 2-6 was my first auto-scroller, and frankly it was terrifying. The levels before allowed me to take my time, but now I wasn't able to make any mistakes. Avoiding the plants wasn't that easy either. Like, honestly, I should have died two or three times, but I got pretty lucky with items, letting me take extra hits. And 2 Castle had a lot of spikes to worry about. Some areas were really easy to get hit in, but there was nothing too dastardly. Even Mummy Pokey went really well. I was expecting a lot of attempts with him, but I actually knocked him out first try. And that is all of World 2. It was slightly harder than the first world, but it was still A-OK. -okay. Before moving to World 3, I gotta mention that at this point, the sides of my feet were in tons of pain because of how much pressure I was putting on them. They kind of felt like they were on fire. So I decided to put some socks underneath to try to ease the pain. And unfortunately, that barely helped at all. But you know how we roll. No pain, no gain. So 3-1 was a water level, and it really wasn't that bad. Most of the fish were just swimming along, minding their own business. 3-2 was a really easy level, and 3 Midcastle had me climbing up these grates, and it was a lot simpler than I was expecting. 3-3 is another water level that was also really simple. 3 Ghost House had these time switches with the stairs that I thought was going to be the death of me, but the game is actually just really generous. I was able to get through the whole stage without having to run at all, which kind of surprised me. Three Castle made my cheeks clench quite a bit though from the spikes, but it wasn't anything too terribly difficult. Even the boss was pretty easy. And yeah, that's it guys, we're already done with World 3 and moving on to World 5. 
5-1 really got me peeped from all the snow falling from the trees. I died an immaculate amount of times from getting stuck in it. I eventually realized that I just needed to be patient by letting the snow fall, melt, and then move forward. 5-2 has a lot of ice on the floor, so there was some struggle avoiding the enemies and not getting hit. This was yet another level I just needed to play really slowly to complete. 5 Mid Castle was when I realized that every auto-scroller is miserable with just your feet. Avoiding all the spike balls might not seem that bad, but when two of them or the big one shows up, the difficulty spiked up a notch. This took a lot of tries and just memorizing where I needed to be to avoid the spikes, but thankfully I was able to beat it. 5-3 was a ton of fun for the first half of the stage because you could just slide on your butt and destroy everything in your path, but then the snail accords come in and ruin all the fun. They're not only hard to knock off, but also push you back so you have to land just right, which isn't easy to do given our circumstances. After several attempts, I managed to beat this level. 5 Ghost House was relatively simple, and 5-4 was more the same even with these falling and rising mushrooms. But 5 Castle... Oh, you want to talk about torture? This level serves that in spades. Trying to walk across the conveyor belts just doesn't work well, so doing that with my feet was agonizing. I was constantly dying because I couldn't coordinate running and jumping fast enough. The dry bones of piranha plants didn't help much either as they just made the belts more obnoxious. After dozens and dozens of attempts though, I was able to get across and finish off the boss. Which yet again, wasn't that hard and only took me two tries. So while the challenge has certainly ramped up, we're not quite done yet as World 6 is our next enemy. 6-1 was and still is one of my favorite levels in the game, and it's really easy to complete. The same goes for 6-2. 6 Mid Castle really went wild and burned my buns. The spikes move even faster than previous castles, so I had to die quite a few times to get the hang of when I needed to move. I should also mention that being at World 6 and after playing all day, my feet were hurting so much that I had to stop and walk around every three levels. Like seriously, don't attempt this challenge unless you enjoy Sonic the Hedgehog on the Game Boy Advance, then by all means, go crazy and what is wrong with you? Anyway, Bowser Jr. finally starts getting harder since the platforms flip all around, but I still managed to finish him off. 6-3 was just straight up fun, and 6-4 was basically 6-1 but with fire bars everywhere. 6 Castle 2 is just like the other conveyor belt castle, but 10 times worse. Not only do some of the platforms spin faster, but now you have less ground, there's spikes, and even this troll pipe takes you backwards if you climb into it. This whole stage is just infuriating, because you gotta do it all by just walking when clearly you're meant to be running the entire time. Five decades later, I get to Bowser Jr., and now he's throwing shells at me. This is only slightly harder. By timing my jumps well, I can easily bounce the shell back to him, and he was good as done. 6-5 is another water level that introduced these green deep cheeps. Deep cheeps try to swim towards you, but only if you're facing them. And it's surprising how annoying they can be. I really had to be far away to avoid them all. The last half had these tornadoes that not only made my right toe extremely sore, but sometimes I had to avoid these deep cheeps at the same time. See, this wasn't that hard a level, but it was definitely the most physically painful since I had to mash A so much. So boy was I relieved when 6-6 was one of the easiest levels because you just fly off the springs for most of it. But then there was 6 Castle. It was the first instance where I actually had to run and jump with no way around that. At least I think. So after finicking with my toe, I kind of just slammed it on the controller and made the jump that way. There was a lot of jumps that required me to run, so this level was a pain to get through for that reason. Thankfully, I was allotted to take my time with the jumps, but still. And then there's the Monty Mole boss. Good lord he was a handful. Normally you would just pick up the bob ohms he throws and hit him back, but I can't really do that for obvious reasons, so my only option was to carefully jump off the cannons and jump on his head that way. This worked fine until the last phase because for whatever reason, Mario gravitates away from the tank if you touch the wall of it. I must have gone for this final jump at least 20 or so times before getting it. World 6 was the hardest world yet, and I expect no mercy from World 8. A1 wasn't too bad, but the Crowbers were definitely pushy. 
They dive right into your personal space, which was troublesome at times, but this level wasn't too bad. A2 had these timed water parts that were really stressful because I couldn't mash A as fast as I usually could. The hardest part was this room with the four skeeters and where you had to run across the barrels to get through. There was no way I was doing this unless I destroyed all the skeeters first and then ran across. After a few more sections like this, I completed the level. 8 Mid Castle has plenty of tricky jumps and spikes and all that crap I don't like dealing with, but this one wasn't that bad. There's just a few challenging bits and that's about it. For 8-3, I was kind of shocked at how easy this water level was for something so late in the game. For most of it, you just swim up and then keep moving right around the end. 8-4 could have been really easy too, but these stupid scuttlebugs pop up every 5 seconds and constantly get in the way. You wouldn't think they'd be that bad, but man, you can't get away from these things. It took a lot of tries, but I was able to knock this level out. And for whatever reason, I really struggled with 8 Castle. There was nothing particularly challenging outside of being above lava and some rotating platforms. I just think that my feet were genuinely ready to fall off and just give up. I mean, I have put them through a lot today, but we were so close. There was no time for breaks. And then there was Dry Bowser, who was just a joke. Literally just jumped over him and he was toast. 8-5 was a lava level with mostly unstable platforms, but I didn't encounter anything that frustrating. Now despite 8-6 having rising lava, this level was actually pretty easy. Being able to walk from side to side really simplified things. 8-7 required me to bounce off Koopas to get across the stage. That might sound like a nightmare, but since you can hold A to get your high jump, this level actually wasn't much of an issue. The fire bros weren't that bad either since I just had to time when to jump and get them. And then came 8-8. I will never forget this level and how much rage it gave me. The constant shower of meteors made it impossible to plan out where to move, and the kabombs kept going off when a meteor touched them, making my predicament even more horrible. And the hardest part was this freaking bridge that kept falling apart. There was no way for me to avoid half the things flying towards me. I literally had to damage boost this and pray I wouldn't fall. And we're not done there. We have 8 Castle 2 to tackle. And this is a snake block level. I think you all know how this went. Yeah, it wasn't very good. In fact, it was the most physical pain my feet have ever been in in my life. It's not even that this level was super challenging like 8-8. It was all about the sheer length of it. The level just never seemed to end and I wasn't able to give my feet a break, which made it more likely I would mess up and have to start over, and the grueling cycle just continued on and on. I must have played this level for a couple hours before I got to the boss, and thank god Bowser Jr. was a cakewalk. So finally, we've made it to 8 Final Castle, the ultimate and last challenge. All I gotta say is this actually wasn't that strenuous. Like no really, this is miles easier than the past two levels I did. None of the jumps were that hard, and I could take my time as well. Even the final boss was simple. I took out Bowser and Bowser Jr. on my first try. And just like that, we finished the game and saved the princess. I actually finished a challenge. So is it possible to beat new Super Mario Bros. DS with only your feet? Yes. Yes it is. But I recommend you don't try it yourself, because that was one of the most uncomfortable experiences I've ever put myself through. Now, I know what you guys really care about. I know what you've been dying to see more than anything. That's right, it's time to bust out those Clorox wipes. No worries, guys, I cleaned the hell out of my controller after this, because feet are dirty and gross and I'm not in the mood to get sick. So overall, this challenge was way easier than I anticipated. I can't believe that I could adapt to using my feet to control the game, considering I've never even tried it before. So if you enjoyed this, I'm going to be playing this game again very soon, but I'll be trying to touch every coin. If you want to see that video early, you can do so by clicking that join button down below. You get to see most of my videos early, weekly video schedules, an exclusive Discord role, and so, so much more. But with that, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you you have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.